This is how the door to the head used to close. See that? Just will not stay open. Gives you an idea of the, the angle of the boat. <laughs> now the door stays open. Hmm. To make that slight difference in the door, all I had to do was add about 1,600 pounds of weight to the boat. Let me show you how I did it. Well, this was the day. New motors were getting put in. I had them sitting in a trailer in the parking lot. First step was to take everything off the deck of the boat, including the hatches. This boat has got three hatches, and then it has a massive big hatch. Look at those engine compartments, all painted white. I was about as ready as I could be. I even had my crew here. That's Mike, who's helped me in the past, and you see on the dock over there, that's Lynn and Vern. They all helped me get the big hatch up and out of the boat. That's quite a heavy thing. I wouldn't have been able to do that by myself. We stuck it over there on the hard to get it out of the way. On the hard, that means on land for all you land lubbers out there. The birds thought it was freaking hilarious. I thought it was a bit more serious because it was finally time to get this done. There she is, nice and empty. Running out of excuses not to put these motors in. So how can we help you guys? Uh, moral support. You can do it. I can be a cheerleader for you. <laughs> go Marty, go Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Vern undoing the electrical connection to the boat. Up front, Mike was there ready with his little tow boat. It's a nice sized boat, but little compared to mine. All right, Roger says, bring it over to the tip of the floating dock. He's got one boat to put in and then we'll be good to go. All righty, this is it, we were ready. Again, I took the lines off <laughs> and the big boat was free. I know you guys have seen this before, but it really is an epic moment. Leaving the slip is pretty cool. Hopefully this is one of the last times I would be doing it without power. Yep, that's pretty cool. Nice to be out in the open. But it didn't last very long. Mike pushed me over towards the floating dock. Lynn and Vern were there to catch their lines. Over here is where I'd be able to get next to the fork truck, which would put the motors in. Piece of cake. It's a piece of cake when you got good friends and capable people willing to help you out. Everybody's gonna wonder why I ain't doing anything. Right now. You're gonna bump. Burns in. I got 
horsepower. You're about to have 700 up in there. <laughs> Well, there's the motor sitting over there on the uh, trailer. Mike and I attached the chains to it. And here comes Roger with the fork truck. We looped the chain around one of the forks. And the motor was ready to fly. Houston, we've got liftoff. <laughs> Whew, yeah, it's about $2,500 floating in the air, <laughs> resting on a chain. Not stressful at all. Well, while Roger drove the engine over towards the boat, me and the crew walked back and uh, prepped ourselves to accept the motors. All that was really to be done was to get on board and wait for Roger to show up. And here he comes now. We swung the motor over and he inched it forward and inched it forward tried to lower it in, but the chain was a little bit too long. We weren't able to get it in close enough. So we had to take it, put it on the ground, and shorten the chain, and try again. This time the fork hopefully would be able to fit underneath the upper section of the boat, and he'd be able to get it forward enough so that he'd be able to lay it down ins inside the boat. Roger really is a good fork truck operator. Mike's pretty good too, man. This went fairly smooth, considering we had never done it before. Little by little, down it went into its new home. Ooh, man, that's so close. That's it. We're gonna pull them chains off? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's it. That's where she's sitting, huh? I can't believe it. That was perfect. Nice, fella. That was, that was a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a lot of stress relief right there, having both those motors sitting where they, go where they have to be. They were literally just sitting there inside the boat. All the final adjustments are still to come. Now we just had to get the boat out of there, back over to the slip. Again, my boat, myself, everything was in Mike's capable hands. We had a nice stiff breeze that morning. You might be able to see it on the top of the water. You can see the wind rolling across. Tide was moving pretty good too. But for now, I didn't care. My boat was out on the water.
even though I was under tow, it was still a glorious feeling, you know? It felt like I was making progress, and I was getting closer to being under power myself. Soon, Marty, soon. Mike did a nice job fighting the wind and the current. You can see the tide and the water right there. See that line that we just passed? That was like a, a tough spot to get around. We got it done though. Vern and Lynn were there to catch the lines again. They pulled us back into the slip. It was a big part of the puzzle, done. A big part yet to come. There's a big one off the list. Well, I was just about spent. The motors were in place, and I was putting them away for now. There were so many other things that I had to do. I had to get out of my kayak and do some fishing and just do some video editing and <sighs> mostly just some relaxing. More work will come before I know it. <laughs>